Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Not Your Average Bucket List by Only in Your State. Today, we're going to be talking about Northern California, specifically the historic town of Weaverville. I'm here with my co-host, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Hey, Marissa. How are you? I'm doing very well. I was under the weather last week. That's why we didn't get a new episode out. Uh, I I sounded pretty gross, uh, so I didn't think anybody would want to hear that. You're sounding great now. Good to go. (laughs) Thanks. Um, So I just want to start this episode by saying that I think Sarah is moving to Weaverville. (laughs) Okay, so maybe I ended up on Realtor.com and maybe I found some places I want to visit. Like, honestly, I found that cute A-frame cabin that's like on a two acre lot and it's in California. Like California is California. Yeah. Um, I might be packing up. <laughs> Honestly, just that price point alone, I would say, like, pretty alluring. Just California, yeah, but also just, I feel like, very hard to find homes nowadays that are under oh $200,000. I know. So, Honestly, I should track that and see where it, because it was affordable, but it's probably going to be like 200000 over asking, all cash. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love the housing market. Um, but anybody that wants to move to Weaverville, check it out. Uh, that there's an A-frame for sale. Um, we are not sponsored by Realtor.com, but um, <laughs> we're going to talk about. There's an article that we have on Only in Your State about Weaverville. The title is "The Surprising Northern California Town That Makes an Excellent Weekend Getaway." So, before we dive in, do you agree with that title? What are your thoughts? I'll add an addendum, possibly a very uh, peaceful living situation for one of the podcast hosts, if not just a weekend getaway. Um, But no, I I agree completely. I think it has that sort of um, je ne sais quoi that some of these Western towns have, especially with its history and some of the quaint, you know, um, aspects of it. So I would agree. I'm in the agreement column. How about you? Yeah, definitely agree. I think this place, because... First and foremost, Weaverville is not big by any means. No. There, are, It's about 3,700 people. So this is considered small town. And while there may not be a ton of things to do, if you're the type of person that likes to travel and you like going places and you like having a packed itinerary, this might not be the place for you because right. you're not going to have things lined up one after the other to do. However... Right. I do think this does make for an excellent weekend getaway because there's, there is a lot to do in the area surrounding area. And especially when it involves nature, lots of nature here. I think that's the caveat. Like if you're looking for like going out, tons of restaurants, like you're not going to get that. However, I am, I am going to touch on this later. There is like a small downtown. There are some cute spots to visit. There are some like historical, historical spots to visit. And to your point, it's in, you know, at the bottom of the Trinity Alps Wilderness, which is by the, like, Shasta Trinity, um, I guess, state for- forest? Hold on. Yeah, the Sh- Shasta mm-hmm. Trinity National Forest, yeah. which is the largest in California. Tons of stuff to do. Yeah. Just not nightlife, necessarily. Yeah, which is fine, but perfect for me. Yeah, right? Love that. <laughs> Let me disappear into the mountains for a few days and uh, turn off my cell phone. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's basically what you'll find here in Weaverville. It It is a mountain town. There's an elevation of about 2000 feet. So, uh, you're going to be pretty high up there. And mm-hmm. like you said, there's a lot of history here, which I think is to me what added to the allure, because I don't know what it is about <laughs> like the gold rush. I'm so fascinated by, I know we've I... talked about it before, but yeah. I had to do a little like summary because obviously I'm aware of the gold rush. I'm like, actually I need some perspective on when, why, where it happened. So California Gold Rush, I'm just going to dive in real quick. Yes. Just just in case. Uh, So this happened in early 1848, reached peak 1852. And this happened because that Sutter's Mill in California, the owner or an employee found um, gold in the water-powered sawmill, saw gold in the creek bed. And this is what really kicked it off was John Sutter at Sutter's Mill. It's kind of just discovering, oh, there's gold. And they try to keep it hush, hush, hush. Didn't happen. And this was along the American River outside of Sacramento near Colma or, or in Colma. And basically within a year, starting out in 1848, 4,000 gold miners in the area. And within a year, 80,000 
1,000 gold miners, colloquially known as the 49ers because it was 1849, Mm -hmm. rushed out to the California gold fields and were just having a heyday. And it peaked in 1852. And by the end of that decade, you know, it was over. It was just Mm -hmm. a flash in the pan. And I think it's fascinating. Like, interesting. First of all, how'd they get the word out? Like, I was just thinking that. I was like, right? What the heck, man? Imagine if somebody did in, uh, you know, little snitches out there uh, could have kept all that gold. Fast. They're like, oh, we got to get this word back to the East Coast. (laughs) No, but I think that's really, I think that's really fascinating. Um, You know, just the fact that it was a couple of years and people went crazy because Mm -hmm. hello gold back then i mean wow and then this is how weaverville came to be is during this california gold rush that it was founded in 1850 and what i thought was really neat about this is that weaverville was home to 2000 chinese gold miners yeah and it had its very own chinatown which i thought was really cool because it wasn't just you know your Americanized story of of gold rush, but these were specifically Chinese gold miners. Miners, and then uh, you know eventually the, the no more gold left to uh, to snag. But this town has sustained itself as a historical place, and then also just like a mountain town that uh, people still live in and love. Yeah, and I do think that the history and specifically of the Chinese miners, I think it's really interesting to me because usually you see, you know, like these Chinatowns, Asia towns, little Korea towns in major cities because of, I mean, quite frankly, some, you know, darker history because, you know, there was some othering and people were pushed to corners of the cities that they, you know, people said they didn't belong in. However, in this small town of now 3,700 people, there were such a population dense um it was so, so population dense of chinese immigrants and workers i thought that's really fascinating yeah. and how to this day it still leaves its footprint and it's celebrated and it's part of like the we'll talk about it in shortly but what they left behind is like part of like the historic registry and is like a you know supported by the state so i think it's a very unique story to tell about one of these you know chinatowns that have developed in you know, in, in, in a city, well, not really a city, in a tiny town. So I thought that was really fascinating in and of itself. How yeah, it, it is. And there are still a lot of aspects throughout the town that, um, you know, you can go and explore that are representative still of the this Chinese culture in this small town, like the Joss mm-hmm. House State Historic Park, uh, home to the oldest continuously used Chinese temple in the entire state of California. So not yeah. just NorCal here, but um, so you will, when you visit, you get to kind of get a glimpse into the cultural history of the area, which I think is really fascinating and just adds to the allure of this place. A hundred percent. And this, um, when you talk about Joss House, there's actually like a guided tour and display pictures, art objects, mining tools, weapons, like a ton of history in this little part of the town. And I if I visit and or maybe live there, I would absolutely go, go and visit this place. It's fascinating. Yeah. Do you think if you were alive back then, you would be a gold miner? Like, would, would the allure of of prospecting gold uh, move you to rush mm, out there? That's a huge risk, Marissa. Uh, I don't think so. I don't think I'm a gold miner. <laughs> really? No. Wow. Here's what it'd be. I okay. would have a little cottage in the woods, and I'd have, like, some herbs and chickens this is what i want to do today by the way not just back then <laughs> but this is what i'm gonna do and i don't think i'd risk it to go out west i'd be interested mm-hmm. but also you know i don't want to get a uh, dysentery so i think what would happen is that i would Fair. just have a little farm in the woods with little chickens and maybe be like an herbalist of some sort and oh. uh yeah i think that's Love what that. i'd be doing what about you are you got out west nice. panning the rivers and uh um, I probably would just for fun. I don't think I would make it like a, you know, a, a cutthroat, uh, do or die kind of thing. But, um, I think that stuff is fun. Like just, I remember I was in elementary school and there was a little Creek by our school that we would go out to for science class and we would pan the Creek for, yeah. you know, obviously not gold, but, um, Never just know. like to Could see some high, right? some <laughs> my science teacher now is a millionaire. 
Um, <laughs> no, but, but it was just like so much fun. Go to child labor. What a story that would be. <laughs> oh, man. I got to check up on him, uh, actually. <laughs> LinkedIn. Um, but no, I just like that idea. It's kind of like a, you know, like a, a scavenger hunt, if you will, that you're just panning. And I know that it's, you know, that how many people went out there for the gold rush didn't hit big. Yeah. Like you would walk yeah, away with yeah. a, like a tiny little thing and maybe get, you know, whatever. But um, that's the thing. I mean, aside from having to cross the country and that this time of the U.S. history, and I would be afraid of actively dying in some sort yeah. of, you know, event. Um, also, it's, a, it's such a gamble. It's like, am I going to get, yeah. am I going to hit it big? Am I going right. to get the gold or is it just slowly sifting right. through mud? You know? For hours upon hours. Yeah. Uh, no, that's, yeah. I, I like barely play the lottery today, so I don't know who I'm fooling, so... <laughs> there would be an appeal, though, like going out to these gold rush towns, maybe running a saloon, you know, if yeah. you could own things back then. But, you know, running a saloon and just be this like rootin' tootin', like no nonsense kind of town owner. Like, I would like that. Yeah, Sign me up. that would be you cool. Come to my town, pan for gold, and leave, and you'll be fine. <laughs> That's great. I love it. Now you're, you're the mayor and the you run the apothecary there. I love this uh, little <laughs> town. Yeah, yeah, That's exactly it. Nail on the head. <laughs> so... Uh, Weaverville, we talked about the history, we talked about uh, how it came to be, but let's discuss maybe a little bit of what people can expect now if they yeah. go visit. You mentioned the downtown area in particular. Do you want to touch on that and, and what's there? Yeah, I thought it was really, you know, for being such a small town and <clears throat> not really being a hub of like shopping or anything like that they have. A few spots that I think is really quaint. So they have the Trinity County Brewing Company. They have a cafe on Main. They have a place adorably called Diggins. They also have a ca like a, a a diner called I think the Nugget. Just very very much on theme. But there is enough spots in the downtown area that if you were visiting for a weekend and you wanted to go on hikes and you were going to fish and all that stuff, you'd have places to go for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. They also have the Jake Jackson Museum, which is a typical local museum that has you know gold rush memorabilia and history and stuff like that um it also uh like we mentioned the uh joss house state historic park they have also the uh, trinity heritage national scenic byway that kind of runs through the area so if you want to hop in the car and kind of on a tangent from downtown i was just making a list but if you're wanting to like not go uh, uh up on a hike or something want to get in the car you could also do that swing through the downtown i just think even though it's really only busy in the summer in this area. Anytime you go, there would be things to do. Yeah. I did like that the town itself hosts a lot of events throughout the year. Mm -hmm. So they do like an annual 4th of July parade. There's the Trinity County Fair yep. um, where a lot of people come together. But yeah, it is. it does seem to be more popular during like sp late spring, summer months, you know, um, I'm assuming because that's where a lot of people are heading out into nature. They want to go visit, you know, the Trinity Alps wilderness. And uh, there's a lot of hiking. There's a lot of camping, fishing. Um, so, it yeah. Also, it doesn't have the vibe of, you know how sometimes when you go through a small mountain town and you look at the only gas station and it's like 10 bucks a gallon and it's like, oh, yeah. this isn't a place anyone lives or functions. It's just a a middle point that's not the feeling i get from weaverville it's like actually yeah. very proud of its history it's very quaint and like you said they have events and they really you know love who they are like every time that yeah. i saw comments and maybe we'll get to that but comments about the town or i even saw this um this great town video someone did to like kind of like show off the businesses and things they're all very proud and like happy that they live here and it's it's just lovely yeah, it does seem to me like a really laid back mountain town. It's yeah. not a lot of, uh, nobody's really rushing around. It's It has that, you know, just kind of move at your own pace situation. Um, and then, yeah, like the Main Street area is really cute. It's, mm -hmm. it's a lot of small shops. There's like a, you know, a, a stoneware, stoneware, hardware store. Um, and then, yeah, the Mama Llama Eatery and Cafe. Yeah, I, that was cute. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they do have a saloon, Tangle Blue Saloon. 
Yeah. Um, and yeah, I just thought that there's a lot to do. I think that's why maybe perfect for a weekend because you can fit everything in the town in. And then if you want to, yeah. you know, like coming and going from the town driving, you could stop like at nearby Trinity Lake. Uh, yeah. looks beautiful. And yeah, there, there are a lot of things to do in the surrounding area as well, if you want to kind of like venture out. Yeah. And I, I will say that um, the Shasta Trinity National Forest, like we talked about earlier, it is the second largest wilderness area in California. It is huge. So it has over 600 miles of trails and over 500,000 acres of land. So whenever we are speaking about things to do, you're going to want to actually look near, I don't know why I gave us that attitude, um, but you're going to want to look specifically near Weaverville and Trinity Lake. So I was pulling out a few examples of trails that you could hit. So Lewiston Lake Trail, which is a 3.1 mile easy out and back. There's the East Weaver Creek Trail, which is a 6.8 mile hard trail. So, you know, take it your own risk. There's the Day Ranch Spur and East Weaver Creek Loop. 2.5 mile easy loop and then there is the Mackenzie Gulch loop which is 3.8 miles moderate loop so if you look at I this see. area you can be and maybe this is just me being a midwesterner I'm always shocked by how large scale these forests are so it's not just yeah. you hop in the car go down in five minutes if you want to hit all these other trails in the area you're going to have to be in the car for quite a while so those are some spots that are nearby I thought that looked really cool Yes, I think that's awesome. Uh, thank you for sharing those hiking trails because uh, I think, you know, what we want to do essentially for this episode in particular is really highlight this area as a travel destination because it it is a small town and you might not even know it existed because personally, I, I love Northern California. I've been there many, many times, but I've never heard of this place. Yeah, And it does sound like a place that I would want to visit um, after kind of just like, you know, researching and hearing these things, and especially with just like a handful of nearby hiking trails in this giant national forest. Yeah. Uh, I feel like that would make for a really great weekend. Absolutely. It is pretty self-contained and you can, I don't know, just really take in all of the amazing uh, places nearby because in addition to Trinity Lake, it's also close to Lewiston Lake and Ruth Lake. So you can, if you're not into hiking and maybe want to, you know, go boating, kayaking, um, fishing, you can also do that. So there's a lot yeah. of options nearby. Yes. And it's also pretty close to Oregon too, um, mm. which, yeah, that I, after you sent me that one listing, I was like, oh, maybe I'll look in the area and see what's there. <laughs> um, and then I went down a rabbit hole. But uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, That's Northern cool. California, yeah, <laughs> uh, way outside of my budget, but um it's always nice to dream mm -hmm. you mentioned uh reading some comments from people about weaverville and we did post on our only in northern california facebook page asking people for personal stories were there any that stood out to you that you wanted to share so a few of them that i was very envious of given our realtor comments i see saw some people like i lived there for a few months loved it or I happen to live here and it's great to live where people want to go visit. And I'm like, yeah, okay. Brag about it. Just kidding. But it is, <laughs> it, it is great to see that people um, feel really blessed to live there or they're passionate about their town. Um, and what, there was one more I wanted to call out. Uh, I'll, let me scroll through and see if I can find it. How about you? Were there any okay. that stood out to you? I think like the majority of the ones that I saw were that people were driving through that mm -hmm. it wasn't like their destination that it was like, yeah, I was driving through, uh, Rick said he was driving on his motorcycle back in the 1970s. And, no. um, you know, people were like, oh, we, we were randomly going through and there was an accident. So we were detoured, but we ended up stopping and we stayed at this adorable bed and yeah. breakfast. Like I, to me, those are the best trips because you, it's spontaneous, you know, you end up exploring a place you didn't even know existed and it's just like happenstance. So I found the comment that I wanted to call out because I thought it was so cute. But Karita said that um, she grew up growing there and it's a woodsy town, shops are amazing, river's cold, but it's like the show Cheers where everyone knows your name, which is just... Interesting. It's quaint. Um, I and love I grew that. Up, I actually grew up in a, like a, a, we call it the Twin Cities, but it's they're not cities um, and it's not the, the twin cities, but it was a village in a town and, you know, about 
2,000 people and 3,000 people. It was pretty small. And I feel like if it were in a mountain like this, maybe I never would have, because there is some sort of appeal to that, you know, that sort of like yeah. slower living small town life of just, you kind of, I mean, good and bad. If you're running uptown, you're going to see five people, you know, <laughs> you know, yeah. <laughs> get stuck um, talking for hours. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. At least they're not doing the Midwestern goodbye where you're talking all the way to your car and you stand at your car for another <laughs> hour and you never really leave. Yeah. That's Have fun. Um, <laughs> yeah. Another comment that I loved, Mike said that this is in his home since 1996 and he feels absolutely blessed to live where most people want to vacation. Yeah. I thought that was great. Word, Mike. Word. Yeah. <laughs> That's I mean, honestly, though, it's um, it's great, and it's good to see so many people say there's so much to do, and this is such a small town, and everyone that I've seen in these comments, or even just, like, looking on, um, just, like, when I was doing my research, there's lots to do, and you wouldn't expect that from such a small town, which, you know, I guess we've kind of hit that note a few times, but I just want to reiterate, it's in such a great location, I think, that you don't want to overlook something like this. Yeah, agreed. I think um, we are going to uh, round out our show notes with uh, the link to the article that was written, as well as I want to include these hiking trails that you found, just so we could throw those in for people to just get an idea if they want to, you know, head there and hike. Um, I also came up with a couple of uh, places to stay in the area. They, they do have really adorable bed and breakfast like Weaverville Whitmore mm -hmm. Inn and there's like a lodge on the outskirts of town that I saw too that was adorable so we're going to throw this all in the show notes um, so that everybody can use the this as a resource if you want to visit and um, yeah anything else you want to add about Weaverville uh, come visit me at my new <laughs> friend Abbott and I'll show you around it'll be it'll be a good time Dropping the address in the show notes, too, to visit Sarah. <laughs> Ugh, maybe not. 